tents and visiting a few areas. Visiting? And tents well. I'll have to go up to New York to drop off the last of Oh, right. Things. Yep. Hey, everybody. Uh, that's probably enough of our rambling. Just uh, welcome to another edition of Minerals Live. We certainly appreciate everybody joining us today. And uh, we'll get uh, get us queued up here. I don't know if mm -hmm. we're centered enough. I don't know if I got our chair set. I'm not used to just two of us uh, being right. on the set. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of nice having a little elbow room, you know. Yeah. And unfortunately, we have to lead today's show with a with a lot of really sad. Well, a bit of sad news. Um, Dr. Stephen Neely passed away yesterday, last night, this morning. I don't know exactly which, but um, he. Uh, finally succumbed to some of the health ailments that have been plaguing him for the last few years, and we will certainly miss him dearly. dearly. Yep. Found out this morning and uh, noticed uh, a lot of really, really wonderful photos and tributes mm -hmm. yep. from a wide variety of people on social media. He's you know, been around for a long time. I've only known him for about three years, but I always immensely enjoyed my visits to him in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. We had a real shared passion on fluorites mm -hmm. and uh, always had some great uh, discussions there. Um, just absolutely great guy. Yeah, he was uh, a fixture at mineral shows mm -hmm. for, gosh, I don't know, the last 40 years. Uh, I want to say at least, at least since I can remember, and I came in, you know, early 90s yeah. and he was he was there every show every denver every tucson yeah the and, first uh, time i actually met him was at a tucson show and uh, the it, talked to him for about 30 seconds and the first thing is <laughs> you want to go see a killer specimen and i was like yeah. of course i do yeah takes me a, a couple of places down and, and uh -huh. shows me one of the uh one of the incredible uh, mango quartz with the halloysites in it oh, yeah. uh, that wound up being on the cover, I think, of Rock and Gem. Nice. So, uh, yeah, it was a great way to meet somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was, uh, him. yeah, you can't find many more people uh, more passionate about minerals than Steve mm -hmm. was, and certainly he built uh, and sold multiple collections. Mm -hmm. uh, another Collector's Edge got three of them mm -hmm. that I know of. Uh, that uh, so great worldwide yeah, for us. Yeah. yeah that he still has mm -hmm. um and um, where they will end up now we're a little unsure but there there's some things in the works so we'll keep you posted on exactly where they go and mm -hmm. and what happens and um you know maybe where people can send their tributes and whatnot yeah. i know james webb at the focal crystal has started a string on instagram so if you want to go find him you can certainly send along your condolences there so. James is the one who introduced me to him. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. they, got, they got to be really good friends over the last oh, you know, sure. five, ten years. So, anyway, we'll miss you, Steve. And uh, Very much. Yep. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, one of the greats in the mineral world is, has passed. So, hopefully, some of the young kids that are coming along now will will fill that void. So. Actually, it was one of the younger ones. Uh, was one of the first uh, to post. Andy Ford uh, mm. posted a nice little uh, tribute mm. and photo today. So. He had a he had a far reach uh, for mm -hmm. long time collectors and newer ones as oh, well. Yeah. yeah, well, gosh, I mean, his name, you know, everybody knows it, along with a lot of other people in the business, and mm -hmm. um, everybody re reached out to him to be their mentor. You know, mm -hmm. so um, Mary uh, Eileen's not here. He may need to go get that. Well, Mary's not here either. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see who gets the door. Hopefully it won't have to be one of us. You hear more bells. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. We'll, we'll, we'll cut to a mineral picture and uh, Mr. Paul will just kind of exit stage left or I will, one of the two. You can talk. We, we, we'll lead off with the minerals maybe. And, and, there you and, go. And do it backwards there as you we go. usually do. Talk well, at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now that the, uh, the show season for us is pretty much over, it's mm -hmm. time for uh, Christopher and I to hit the road again. Yeah, we get to settle down and leave the state again. <laughs> yes, so. it is, yeah. it's one of the few times that we really find uh, peace. You know, when we're around the office, it's kind of chaos. You get behind the wheel of the car, you got your route planned, and it's uh, generally pretty smooth and easy. Yep. I like it. Mm. Catch up on your music, catch yep. up on uh, some audiobooks, things mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah, I actually do like to drive. Yeah, and, and of course visiting with a lot of friends. That's it right there. You get to visit with all your friends in mm -hmm. a, in their their home or office, and uh, it's a lot more relaxed than the show floor, and mm -hmm. certainly have a much better time playing rocks and and, and talking <laughs> and 
catching up and all that good stuff. So we really look forward to it. And mm-hmm. I guess you're leaving on the 9th of October, you said? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'll be heading straight down to Texas. I'll be down there for about four or five days. Mm-hmm. And then I'll be heading up to Tennessee for about four or five days. I'll actually be uh, presenting at and showing specimens at the JTV Experience. Very fun. In Knoxville. It's an event they put on every year for jewelry and gemstones and also uh, minerals as well. Mm -hmm. I'll be uh, doing a little presentation on uh, modern classics. Basically, those specimens that have really either been discovered or come to the fore or new varieties of of older uh, species have been found since uh, 2000. Mm. Uh, just kind of, you know, I, I like bringing new collectors sure. into our hobby. So I really want to show that, you know, even if you haven't been doing this for 10, 20, 30 years, you know, there's always new stuff coming out yeah. where you can really be at the forefront and be on equal footing with any other collector for, mm-hmm. for new varieties coming out. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's certainly what keeps the energy going in this hobby mm-hmm. is new stuff. So that uh, that's always the buzz at the show. What do oh, you yeah. got this new, you know? Like our considerates. Yes. They did very well. Absolutely. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any on the show and have not had any on the show yet. One thing about uh, Black Minerals is they don't show too well on my turntable. Fair mm-hmm. enough. Yeah. But uh, we'll try to have one on. Uh, maybe uh, the next time we do a show, uh, gosh, I hate to say it, it may be uh, the beginning of December, December yeah. before we're on again because uh, you're gone and then I'm gone. Unless you figure out how to zoom me in while I'm on the road. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going there. You know, we can, we can, we can uh, ask uh, somebody at the, the cable news networks. And, you know, how, how do we uh, do this? There was a time I actually did look into trying to do that. Cool. Uh, have people zoom in. Ooh, actually, at yes, the time, it wasn't yeah. Zoom. It was uh, what was uh, the last meeting software that was out there. Oh. No, I always uh, try to avoid those. <laughs> yeah, the zooms come along, you know, really to the forefront since the pandemic started. But there was another guy. Somebody sent me a message. There was another one out there that mm-hmm. you could uh, you could link into this software and uh, make it work. And I tried once and it just failed horribly. So I never bothered going again. Uh, this uh, it's a bridge too far. We have we have enough trouble just making it work with all of us here on the. <laughs> so anyway mm-hmm. yeah. so well where else besides jtv are you going so uh once there i'll be hitting the east coast going mm-hmm. up through new york i'm going to try to make it actually up towards wisconsin mm. uh and some of the northern areas Very that nice. i've been through since uh since i've been here and mm-hmm. uh you know always trying to expand the route if mm-hmm. uh you know you're not somebody that i've visited before and you're basically in points east of colorado or mm-hmm. down in texas you know, I'd love to come visit you. Uh, please uh, send us an email at right. uh, minerals at collectors edge, uh, dot com. Yeah. When uh, Phil was with the company, he used to go to the UP and all those areas in north. Uh, mm-hmm. So if you remember when Phil stopped by, we uh, we have Christopher. He's mm-hmm. going to try and cover that area as well. He's uh, he's biting off a lot. We'll see mm-hmm. how. I'll bring <laughs> I'll be bringing fine uh, mineral specimens mm-hmm. on this trip, and I'll also for those of you who are resellers, we bring a lot of uh, Keystone. There you go. Uh, items as well. So, minerals for everybody. Yeah. Do you have any open houses anywhere, or is it mostly just going to be besides the thing at JTV? Besides the thing at JTV, um, it's possibly in New York. Mm-hmm. Every now and then I do one up there, so I'm going to try to do mm-hmm. one there, but I don't think, especially with a lot of things going on, that we'll be able to do one in Texas this time. We gotcha. did one last time. So. Right. Always good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can't wait. Mm-hmm. Just uh, the road. Yeah. It's <laughs> and fun. then you're going to be, I should be getting back towards the end of uh, October, and you'll mm-hmm. be heading out right after I get back. Right after I, th- mm-hmm. it's looking like I'm going to have to leave on the 2nd. Um, okay. Because I'm going to be doing an open house at the Rice Museum up uh, just outside of Portland on that Saturday, yep, mm-hmm. the 5th. Oh, it's a great little museum. It really is. Mm-hmm. They have a wonderful display, and oh God, it's their centerpiece is the rose. So Home they how can rose. it be bad? Absolutely. How can it be bad? So uh, looking forward to... Um, uh, visiting with everybody up there and um i believe it's just going to be a one day event uh, we're still kind of working on the schedule and uh, we'll take it from there and from there i'll work my way south 
through California and back into Arizona again. We're going to end the show at an open house in at the Tucson Fine Mineral Gallery. Mm. Uh, hopefully before that happens, um, we'll get an email out. Uh, I'll probably try to get an email out before I leave on my road trip. It's going to be the weekend before Thanksgiving, and everyone mm. is welcome. Uh, we're going to have speakers. Uh, another beautiful catered meal it's going to be a heck of a weekend you're not going to want to miss it if i could see the uh calendar (laughs) excuse my peeking up it's going to be the 18th 19th and 20th of november Mm -hmm. so uh, put that on your calendar um tucson fine mineral gallery there i believe at 465 west st mary's and um, everybody will be there so nice. all the dealers are planning on being there and set up. I'm not sure if uh, Patrick Dreyer will make it or not, but all the, um, the mineral dealers will be there. It's going to be and great to do some pre-Christmas shopping. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be a, a great weekend and a great time to, of year to be in Tucson. You oh, know, go yes. there, spend a day at the gallery, go play golf for a day, go hike in the Saguaros for a day, and it will be a lot more low-key than you know, about two months from then. <laughs> Dur- during that event, because uh, uh, I know during uh, during Tucson we had mm-hmm. some speakers. Is anybody going to do a presentation during that little? That that is c- the current plan, but I don't have nice. not heard the schedule. I'm going to be taking a load of minerals down there next weekend, mm-hmm. and hopefully by the time I get the email out towards the end of October, mm-hmm. we'll have the lineup of uh, speakers. Cool. So. Yep. Yeah, during the Tucson uh, Fine Minerals, uh, Tucson uh, shows last year, the Fine mm-hmm. Mineral Gallery uh, had the spans that a spectacular yeah. presentation uh, kind of mm-hmm. tied to the uh, display that they put on out there. We mm-hmm. had a few other lectures as well. Uh, definitely check the website uh, and the uh, Facebook pages, mm-hmm. and, and I'm not sure if there's an Instagram page or not, but check the pages for do. the uh, Tucson Fine Mineral Gallery for events all throughout the year, and especially during the shows, because a lot of mm-hmm. people that I talked to were unaware that uh, there were talks uh, there during the show, but oh, there right. absolutely will be, and uh, well, we'll definitely be going forward. It yeah. was a it was an interesting year this year <laughs> at the gallery. the The first year it opened, um, growing you know, pains. It was, yeah, growing pains. <laughs> uh, the, the waning months of the pandemic, mm-hmm. uh, everything going on, but uh, the the Tucson Fine Mineral Gallery. Now that the westward look has uh, gone by the the wayside after a great 20 year run yeah. is going to become the hub of, of, of fine minerals for Tucson. Yep. And, um, it's, uh, we see it growing and, and really becoming the epicenter of, uh, the Tucson show. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're expanding the back area uh, that was kind of a loading dock mm-hmm. storage area last year. And there's going to be three more dealers back there with Marcus yep. Budil, Scott Rudolph, yep. and hmm, there's one more. I'm not sure who the other Mm, not sure either, hmm. and uh, we're, I'm sure we're insulting somebody very badly. I'm well, sorry. I, I thought they were going to have a photography area back there, like yeah, set up with somebody, but yeah, I'm not sure. But I don't there. think I think there's three dealers and that because um, it's a pretty big area back there. Um, they were using it for staging this year. I'd been told about one and hadn't been told about the third, so I don't know. Okay. Shh. Mm. Secret mm. score. Mm. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> We'll all find out shortly, so uh, we'll definitely keep you posted, uh, keep watching out, and um, once we're all back from our road trips in uh, December, we'll start hitting it hard, uh, keeping you informed what's going to be coming up at the Tucson show. Yeah, which I'm already excited, uh, just some of the stuff that's come in lately, we've already got things uh, lining up to uh, go out to the show, so mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be another exciting year, Yep. Uh, new stuff's going to be out, it'll be great. Yep. So... Quick recap, definitely, if you're on the East Coast and you want uh, Christopher to stop by, Mm -hmm. give him a a ring, a shout, Christopher Mm -hmm. at CollectorsEdge.com, or I don't know if you want to give him your cell phone number. Just, I'll I'll send it to you in the email. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, or get a hold of me for a West Coast trip. I'm Mm -hmm. leaving the 2nd of November, and we'll be covering most of the things west of Denver, Mm -hmm. and um, then... uh, Join us at the Tucson Fine Mineral Gallery the uh, weekend of the 18th, 19th, and 20th of November. I uh, definitely want to make uh, plans for that, if, uh, if at all you can make it. If you're down anywhere west of Texas and south of 
Utah, you know, Utah <laughs> South or in that area there, there's no reason not to go. It, mm -hmm. it, you know, come down for four or five days and really have a good time. It's a Beautiful good time to gallery. take a break, yeah. Hopefully they've got the good catering there during the event as well because the, food, the, <laughs> the food was another good reason to visit. I don't know if it's going to be the barbecue still, mm -hmm. but um, they're definitely planning on having uh, it catered again for that weekend. Nice. That salmon salad <laughs> and the brisket were just two of my favorite things. Yeah. Mm. So good. That's good. And um, if you can make it for the uh, open house in November, definitely check us out in uh, January. For sure. That was awesome, as Christopher said. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a little too awesome. Mm, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, my trip. And then again, of course, we um, want to send our best wishes to the Neely family. Mm -hmm. Betty Lou and, um, and his kids and everybody definitely. must be pretty devastated right now. And um, any support you might be able to offer would be great. Yeah. So. Uh, without further ado, we do have six fine minerals for sale today. We do. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll lead it off with specimen number one like we normally do. Mm -hmm. One of these days we'll go crazy and start it off with specimen number six and go backwards. Ooh, you're a madman. I am. I'm crazy. Anyway, specimen number one is a calcite from China. Pretty amazing piece. Uh, this came out of the uh, uh, Keith Proctor collection. Um, he really uh, revered it as being uh, uh, quite an exa extraordinary example of a prismatic calcite form. He called it a penetrating twin. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe we can have some people chime in. Um, it, it looks like parallel growth to me. Um, mm -hmm. But he claimed it was an interpenetrant twin. Um, but it certainly is a prismatic calcite crystal that is nice and clear, clean, and very, very lustrous. Mm -hmm. I, I really like the piece. Let's see if we can get her on the turntable here. Show her spinning, boy. I got it kind of tight. Yeah, I'm really kind of tight out there. <laughs> uh, there. And it's very interesting with those unequal prism faces like you've got one of the hexagonal prism mm -hmm. faces is incredibly narrow yes and then the one opposite is slightly wider and then mm -hmm. the others are just significantly wider because i've seen some right. where they almost form like a triangle because of right. the three but these are just right. very unique yep you can see that kind of as it's going around on the triple i should probably back that up a hair Sorry, folks, for making you dizzy there. Um, but they are parallel. The opposing faces are parallel. It is a beautiful prism face uh, calcite crystal that is uh, from the Qinlong Mine in Guizhou Province, China. It uh, measures 7.2 by 10.2 by 2.8 centimeters. And it is a little longer if you just oriented it vertically. Mm -hmm. It is a little longer than 10.2 centimeters. Well, I would have to say... Uh from from your selection today, one of the things that I'm seeing is interesting crystal growth. Yes. Uh, definitely interesting crystallography in these pieces, and, and oh boy, this one is this one is worth studying. Uh huh. For sure. And that's what uh, Keith's uh, second collection was all about. Really. Was uh, crystal form. Okay. Um, he was putting together all the different crystal forms. Although I doubt he was going to be able to do that with calcite. There's 900 different forms, if not more. Yeah. But uh, he was trying to put together a nice uh, collection of crystal form. And I'll tell you, if that's your bag, I mean, I love geometry. I mm -hmm. love spatial geometry. And boy, it just helps so much to have an example in hand. There's yeah. really great illustrations and, and things in books, but absolutely nothing beats having an example of the form in hand to try to really wrap your head around where these uh, right. faces are twinning, the orientation, the axes, everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Great piece. Yep. No, this is really beautiful. And I have it on a three prong stand on the turntable here. Only because on the felt it just won't stand. If you put mm -hmm. this on a glass shelf or other hard level surface, it will stand without a without support. So uh, it does have a nice cleave face at the bottom that uh, is a solid foundation. Um, it just doesn't sit so well on the uh, spongy felt of my turntable. Gotcha. <laughs> we don't want to fall over a mid show. Yeah. In the 12 years of Minerals Live, we've only had one rock fall over. Unfortunately, it wasn't on camera. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, again, this piece is 7.2 by 10.2 by 2.8 centers centimeters from Chinlong Mine, Guizhou Province in China. And 
Today, the price of this wonderful specimen is just $1,400. Very nice. It is a nice piece. Would be a great addition. And uh, as always, outgoing shipment is free. Um, if for some crazy reason you wanted to return it, uh, that would be at your expense. Mm -hmm. But it's only about 10 bucks, so yeah. well worth it if you think you might like it. Um, any of these pieces, uh, I try to pick sturdy things that ship easily. You know, get it in hand, as Christopher was saying, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll love it. Absolutely. So, any other comments you'd like to make on this before Just, we move to I will be taking two? a very close look at that one afterwards. Yes. Myself. Yep. And the next one we're going to is one that I took a very close look at beforehand. Beforehand. <laughs> he, was, he was making notes. Uh. I've, I've got a couple of these, and I'm still trying to figure these things out. Okay. Uh, just the the twin law, or yeah. So it's it's a spinel law twin is uh, what they uh, always call them, but it, it's it's more than just a basic spinel law twin. Right. I mean, typically the classic that you're thinking of is if you you know took part of the uh, the octahedron and just twisted it to where you almost get that little V shape is what you usually think of as mm -hmm. the uh, the spinel law twin. Um, and then I think a lot of those are contact twins, but I'm pretty sure you're getting a more interpenetrating twin here. There's, there's, you'll, you'll find a lot of discussions on the mm -hmm. several illustrations. Boy, the red's coming through really well in this one. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but you're, you know, at first it was just like, okay, well, you know, it's just a spinel twin and you think octahedral and you've got octahedral faces there as this comes around on the side, especially you'll see the octahedral faces actually kind of make a pseudo hexagonal face on the sides here um, yeah so that that's coming around here is kind of a pseudo hexagonal face and it's basically like an octahedral and cubic and a trapezoidal icosatetrahedron like everything just blah <laughs> there's so much going on with these things they are worthy of study and they are very fascinating and if you get one of these in hand and really get it to where you can envision what the faces are that you're looking at boy your just understanding of the world at large just grows. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, it's interesting with these from Morongo as well because some of the ones you get from Mexico uh, often will have like the pseudo hexagonal faces or the octahedral faces will be etched, but the cubic uh, faces will be nice and sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, in right. these Morongo pieces, largely the ones that I've seen, every face Everything. Mm -hmm. is, is totally etched. They've got this little splash of color. I've heard some people call them painted fluorites because they look like they've been dry brushed with purple. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is you see this red come around here. I've never noticed that before. And mm -hmm. maybe it's on some of the other ones. Maybe it's on the ones that I have. But I've never noticed this burgundy red color mm -hmm. that reminds me of like the, the Polish Prodigy pocket, that kind okay. of reddish right, right, color right. that you would mm -hmm. get in there. I've seen all that purple, but I've never seen that red there. And all of those little, mm -hmm. and this might even be a really good textbook way to study this one, is all of those particular faces are likely the same crystal face. Exactly. Uh, right. So this one, again, if you're into crystallography, these are just magnificent, must-have specimens for mm -hmm. anybody who's really into the study of crystallography. There you go. Not to mention just really attractive. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And uh, on the, the turntable, or I'm, excuse me, on the uh, table in the back with uh, the CFL lighting, the, the color of this thing just really popped. The purple ones just really came out. It muted some of the red color that Christopher was talking mm -hmm. about, um, but uh, really popped. And one of the challenge with studying crystallography, especially when you get into like, you know, more complex things like twin laws, is you don't want to have to sit there hunched over with a hand lens to do it. This particular specimen is eight and a half centimeters from mm -hmm. side to side, 5.4 uh, uh, top to bottom, and three and a half, uh, almost 3.4 centimeters uh, thick. Mm -hmm. So this is a very, very large specimen to be able to uh to study the crystal forms with right mm. right great piece mm -hmm. great great piece and today we tried to keep the price friendly for our viewers yep. at twenty seven hundred dollars so it's a good one it is it's a really nice piece would uh, definitely add a splash of nice color and crystal form to your your mineral collection so indeed Get a hold of us, uh, minerals at collectors edge.com, Richard at collectors edge.com, Christopher at collectors edge.com, or, or just give us a call. Uh -huh. I think Alan was generous and posted all of our telephone numbers on the website. Oh, well, so, there we go. So, I uh, remember that. If you, uh, 
I mean, I've gotten some calls lately. <laughs> it's okay. Mm, we're here for you. So uh, reach out, and we will hook you up. So it, uh, if you live in Florida, I don't think we're going to be able to get this to you anytime mm, soon. No. Um, we really, really feel for our viewers in the Florida area and, and yep. up the East Coast because that's going to be a, it's going to be a pretty long week. I was actually just mm. uh, wishing some safety to uh, one of my uh, oldest uh, mineral customers down in uh, Naples. Okay. Right now, her uh -huh. and her mom are, are hunkered down. They're they're gotcha. about eight miles offshore, so they mm. didn't have to evacuate. But okay. They're they're still keeping their heads down for I sure. Bet. So I bet. God bless everybody down there, weather yeah. the storm. They're talking about a twenty foot storm surge, and it's like holy cow. Yeah. I don't. It's going to head up Orlando and probably sweep mm -hmm. up the coast. Yes. So I yes. might catch the tail end of that. Well, probably not that hopefully, far. Out. Hopefully, it no. sweeps out yeah. ahead of you indeed if you're not leaving until the weekend and then you're, yeah. gonna, you're going that to be texas first right yeah and so hopefully anyway moving along i really like specimen number three very much oh yes you know sometimes you look at this in a drawer and it looks a little sleepy but if you get it out isolated and really take a good look at it this is a pretty cool piece a mm -hmm. uh, nice uh, malachite piece with a nice little uh crudely formed sixling of cerusite on it Yep. Like you said, crystal forms are fun this show. Yes. Uh, I try to try to mix it up a little bit. There we go. And nice fibrous malachite. Yes. Great color on these. Right. Great sparkle. You can actually see it. Mm -hmm. See that shine going across as uh, mm -hmm. it rotates around there. Absolutely. And Super uh, little piece. From just forming a nice little pedestal for the surge. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We, we get all kinds of fun things. When we buy... You know, we buy minerals by the container alone from Africa, and um, we get some really cool, interesting things, and this is one of them. And I'm really happy to be able to present this to you on Minerals Live. It is party time when you get to unwrap those. <laughs> it is, for sure. And it was party time yesterday, but unfortunately we can't really talk about that yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got some really cool fluorides, and uh, we'll be able to talk about those soon. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, back to specimen number three, a malachite with cerusite from the Andera mine in the Cockeveld mm -hmm. of Namibia. Um, you want to so give the dimensions? Good size, would this be about a small cabinet size piece? Yes, uh, yes, eight for centimeters sure. by 5.7 by 6. Mm -hmm. Again, super and, little piece. Mm -hmm. And the uh, cerusite itself is 2.6 centimeters. Yep, just about an inch across. Nice little six. It is. Give it couple other nice views it, it, it really is a 360 piece it has one uh, one you know strong display orientation but otherwise it really is a 360 piece and, mm -hmm. uh, gosh I just love the color combination of this true side on malachite very super little piece so yeah, my, my first case was very small it was actually probably man, how much wider than the monitor that we've got in front of us here wow <laughs> but uh, one of the things that i liked when i had a it had it mirrored back to it which a right. lot of people don't like those for their cases yeah. but a lot of people have them right if you're just getting you know kind of a general display case and mm -hmm. not a good mineral cabinet yet right but uh, i always like specimens like this because it's nice that they look good from all dimensions right. when you can see the back of it because you got right. mirrors back there yep. yeah yeah one of the, the good thing about mirrors is being able to see the back of the piece. The bad thing about mirrors is you get all the lights shining in your eyes. <laughs> that's, so, that's a problem. So anyway, um, once I'm, one of these days, Graham is going to figure this out, and uh, he'll create mirrors that don't reflect the lights. Mine, unfortunately, only had lights coming from the top. I didn't have good enough lights uh, for that to be a problem. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Anyway, again, go ahead. And the price on this one. The price on this one, let's get back to it, is... Eight hundred and seventy-five dollars, super piece, cool. super price. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think uh, we'll give it a quick review here. We own everything except for the calcite, so uh, mm -hmm. you know, I just we just throw it out there every time. Steve started the tradition. Mm -hmm. If you were to buy all six set specimens, we mm -hmm. could discount five of them another 10%. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, calcite, we cannot. It, it's on consignment to us from the Proctor Family Trust, and we just, uh, the price is the price, so. But there will there you still go. be no shipping for all six of them. There you go, <laughs> absolutely. So anyway, specimen number four, super little piece. Yeah. Uh, love drill bit twin cinnabars, mm -hmm. love them. Again, with the just really cool crystal forms. This mm -hmm. is a beauty. It is. Oop, where, where to go? 
I have, here it is. Oh. My stand. <laughs> I think I had it on one of these. Feel free to talk so we don't have dead air. I, was, I, was, <laughs> I can just grab you a glob of uh, sticky tech. I was, Maybe. I, was, I was sorry, enraptured <laughs> watching him try <laughs> to uh, set this on the on the base. It's, well, uh, hey, it's a good time watching that sometimes. It is. <laughs> it is. Well, again, you know, we don't like having rocks fall over. Nope. And so uh, I guess this is just going to have to do. Oh, there we go. Got it. Nice. Mm. So, yeah, great lustrous uh, crystal cinnabar here. Mm -hmm. Not sure how the red's going to come out. Really going to kind of hit it with some strong light. Yeah. So uh, if you get a good spotlight on it, you'll mm -hmm. see some uh, twinkling of a vivid red coming through. But uh, really great crystal form. Excellent contrast with the right. quartz that it's on there, yep. too. Sharp, nicely isolated on that bed of quartz. It's mm -hmm. a really cool piece. This one came to us in a collection about six months ago. And... I don't think we've taken it to a show. We might have, but uh, you know, small pieces like this tend to get uh, left in drawers, unfortunately, when yeah. we go to shows. That one was one that I don't think I took out. I actually took several out on okay. uh, on a uh, trip last. Uh, couple, Around May yeah, or yeah, no, in July, July, yeah, July. July, August, and uh, mm -hmm. I don't think I had this one with me. Gotcha, it's a beauty. Yeah, it is. Uh, this one measures. Let's see, 3.7 by 5.7 by 2.3 centimeters and a 1.9 centimeter tall isolated drill bit twin on the on that quartz. It's uh, really a super little piece. And it after is. it goes by one more time mm -hmm. on the turntable, I'll go back to the uh, still shots. Here, that's good enough probably about. There we go. And I'm not sure, so I'm not overly familiar with the Chinese cinnabars, but mm -hmm. from what I've seen, that's a that's a pretty good sized crystal. It is from from it is. that locality. Of uh, it is super sharp for the size. Mm -hmm. I have seen bigger, but they tend to get a little more rounded and and not so pretty. Okay, but um, they they rarely show better red color, and this is just a super sharp, lustrous crystal on that beautiful white matrix of the quartz. Very, nice, very nice, nice piece. Yep. Again, this is from uh, Tongren Prefecture, Guizhou Province, China. Uh, these boy, these came out, gosh, around 2000. Some of the first uh, high quantity minerals that came out of China were these cinnabars, and um, these are just uh, became instant classics for sure. And uh, one of the things I have to say about our, our minerals lives, I don't know if you guys do it as well, but uh, in addition to the, the different news uh, and, uh, you know, upcoming things and seeing all the wonderful, marvelous specimens, one of my favorite parts about the minerals lives is uh, hearing Richard pronounce the uh, uh, <laughs> Chinese locations that I have read but have well, never heard pronounced out loud. So I take notes on these uh, pronunciations for the future <laughs> it's it's a it's a good education on, on pronunciations there well my wife is chinese and she helps me a little bit believe me if she were here she'd be correcting what i'm saying uh you know there's an inflection and a tone to the chinese language that yes. um not many westerners have perfected them so anyway i i think i get her there um, but uh, it's not perfect. A lot closer than I am just from, from looking at the page, I'll tell you that. Well, thank you, Christopher. <laughs> I'll take the compliment, but I'm, I'm not going to boast. Anyway, this is a super piece, super, mm -hmm. super miniature at uh, three at 5.7 centimeters across. It would certainly fit as a miniature. You'd have to diagonal it a little, little bit, a little bit, but uh, this is certainly a competition miniature, and it's just $1,750. Yeah, sharp enough that I can see the crystal form pretty well from five feet away. Yeah, too. yeah. No, this is this is a great piece. If you if you don't have a cinnabar from China and we're even mm -hmm. remotely thinking about getting one, this is this is the one you want to jump on if if a miniature will fit your collection. Mm -hmm. Great for an educational display or a Tucson display case if you're uh, yep. looking to display this variety. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Moving on mm -hmm. to specimen number five. This one's really funky. Another Arango <laughs> fluorite. Got a lot going on with this one. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to hear what you uh, how you describe the crystallography of this one, Christopher. Uh, <laughs> I would describe the crystallography as... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a little mm -hmm. bit all over the place. A little bit. There's mm -hmm. one that may be one of those little Spinel twins on there. 
but everything's very rounded on this. Uh, I actually have a similar piece in my collection that's on a, a little bit of uh, tourmaline. Mm -hmm. um, and mine's actually more botryoidal. This one looks like it's it was maybe thinking about being patriotal, but mm -hmm. it didn't quite get there. Right. So you've got a lot of kind of a dodecahedral forms, I believe, in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, there's one little flattened crystal there. Right. That looks like it may be trying to do that uh, spinel law twinning that we saw mm -hmm. on the other one. And there's just, it's just all shot through with the little uh, tourmalines as right. well. Right. Right. It's very fun. Really piece. cool little piece. And um, if you squint at the picture that's on the on the uh, screen right now, you can come up with all kinds of interesting ways to describe what this looks like. I don't, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, a poodle, or uh, what are you thinking? Uh, <laughs> African cactus. Uh, okay. Well, it looks <laughs> like it's got a little nose and a yeah. tail oh, and a couple of that. paws. Yeah. Let's see know. as it rotates around here what, what speaks to me on the form. Oh, uh, okay. Let's see. Let's get back. Oop, yeah. Better fix the camera. A little short. Yep. <laughs> there we go. That ought to do it. Mm -hmm. So now we'll get over there. Camera is not catching the depth of color on yeah, this. Yeah, the, the grayish black background and black felt sometimes mm -hmm. doesn't do the best for some minerals. But when we get to the uh, the specimen number six, it'll it'll be a standout. Greens are always yeah. hard. Unfortunately, we can't change the the felt in the background for every rock. <laughs> but this uh, super little fluorite, really mm -hmm. cool little miniature at uh, 6.2 by 3.5 by 3 centimeters. Mm -hmm. And it's a steal of a price. Uh, gosh, I don't know how you could do better. This one will probably be the first one to sell at this price. I would think so. At uh, just $400, you can't go wrong with this piece. Really cool. Nice translucent blue-green fluorite, like uh, Christopher was saying. It's shot with uh, shorals, I believe. And um, frankly, I think that's what all these grew on. Uh, just kind of grew over the, uh, the the tourmaline. So $400 for an Orongo Namibia fluorite. Very, very lovely. Like I said, a, lot, a, real, a real fun specimen in hand, this one. Yes. Well, are you ready? I am ready. This brings us to the most important time of the show. <laughs> Always ready for the, for the last one. Yes. Uh, specimen number six. Mm -hmm. We're not going to disappoint. As usual, we have a roto from the Sweet Home Mine, and mm -hmm. today we have a screaming deal. A uh, Zach's Pocket roto fluorite combo on quartz. Uh, Detroit City Portal out of the Sweet Home Mine. Uh-huh. They are busy as bees working around in that. Oh, yeah. And uh, things are looking good right now. And Wish us luck. Zach's Pocket, named after one of our wonderful uh, lab workers and artists, yep. uh, Zach yep. Giuliani. Yep. He does magnificent work in preparing specimens. Indeed. Indeed. And uh, so you've got a little bit of the fluorite going on with this one. There's probably a little spray of sphalerite that you can't really see. There is. That little dusting. Uh, nice uh, rhodochrosites here. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely see that tetrahedrite all down in there in the matrix, I imagine. Maybe a little pyrite I'm seeing there, too. I believe flights. you are correct. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, seeing those in combination is not really rare with I guess no, <laughs> no. Fades, uh, that's kind of what you're looking for <laughs> right. one thing we can do to help bring out the sphalerite I don't know if it'll show it does barely the sphalerite from the sweet home mine generally does fluoresce yellow kind of a golden yellow so it's Might not it really the showing there yeah you can see it a little oh, oh there it is there coming out yep, on the back yep. a little bit yep With more massive on the back look at that and there is some of it on the front as well we're getting yeah. some real yeah. interesting fluorescence in the host rock and yes. in the mine, too. Absolutely. And these two guys are really, really on that are on the roto. Mm -hmm. there. They go pretty good. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we digress. Oh, so we got sphalerites on the top there, too. Yes, yes. indeed. So at uh, 7.5 by 6.5 by 3.5 centimeters, this is a super-sized centimeter specimen for a pretty amazing price. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that here in a second. We'll give you some... Some uh, still picture shots of what everything looks like. A yeah. Nice close up of the ROMs that yeah. uh, measure up to 1.9 centimeters on edge. So these are really good size uh, ROMs. Mm -hmm. 
Um, couple, a couple of sphalerites on the one there on the left. Uh, great matrix covered with quartz and fluorite. And the color on this would be, so just, you know, anytime I see a lot of quartz stacked around it, I always think hedgehog pocket, but these are bigger on average than the hedgehog pocket crystals were, and a little bit mm -hmm. better color, I believe. Yeah. What the hedgehog's more a little pinkish, typically. Oh, the roto romps? Yeah, 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 for sure. So this is no, really, this is good, really good quality. Yeah. It's, uh, that's why we named it Zach's Pocket. It's good quality. <laughs> good yeah. quality. Yep. Anyway. I thought it was just because you made him process everything that came out of that pocket. Actually, I think he's <laughs> one of the first ones to stick his arm in the hole. Oh, so that's why yeah. He was up there. So that's what I got. I got to start yes. camping out up at the mine. Yep. Wait, if you wait want for a Christopher's a pocket. Yep, yep. I got to go get put my hand in the pocket. You got to go dig it. Mm. So anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so anyway, back to uh, it's 7.5 by 6.5 by 3.5 centimeters with a nine 1.9 centimeter on edge roto rom. That's the bigger one on the right there. For full disclosure, let's get back close. There is a little bit of a contact issue on the top of that one mm -hmm. crystal on the right, and the same on the one on the left. Um, but uh, for the price that we're asking for this at just $1,500 for a specimen of this size and composition is just a steal of a deal. Absolutely. Yep. $1,500. And like we were saying earlier, free to you to take a look at on approval. If you'd like to see this, don't hesitate to contact us. For sure. Yep. And uh, easy, one to, easy one to display as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can uh, you can display it in several different ways. Uh, I've had one person suggest, uh, you know, we'll get With back the to crystals on the left side? Yeah, you display like that. It gets a little bit um, lopsided. Mm -hmm. But actually what I've had one person suggest, um, because since everything's on the top half, is just to make a toenail out of it, kind of yeah, like that. Yeah, you could. Um, a little bit too much of matrix on the bottom, but mm -hmm. um, certainly... Certainly a super piece. I like it the way we did it in the lab because it is kind of a floater on that edge. Yeah. Um, I hate to, hate to trim where Mother Nature didn't. Yep. Yeah, you know what I mean? So we try to leave everything as natural and big as possible. Just like me, natural and big as possible. Mm, <laughs> not touching that. Mm. Please don't. No. No. <laughs> Anyway, that uh, kind of brings us to the end of another Minerals Live. Mm -hmm. um, certainly we welcome any comment, uh, critiques <laughs> that you might have Give of our show, it. any suggestions you'd like to see on the show. Mm -hmm. We certainly would like to get back to having uh, some guests on the show, so anybody Absolutely. out there who, uh, who would like to be on the show, uh, give us a ring and maybe we can work on that. Come on in. And speaking yep. of rings, ring the bell, mm -hmm. like and subscribe, and uh, you'll get notified uh, whenever we do our uh, next Minerals Live. There you go. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess Christopher will try to uh, alert anybody if he is able to hold an open house anywhere. And again, Absolutely. I'm going to have an open house uh, November 5th, I want to say. Is that first Saturday in November at the Rice Museum? Get a hold of Aurora there, Aurora Gilget mm -hmm. at uh, the Rice Museum. And uh, she'll be able to fill you in about all the details, or me. Um, we happy to help. Awesome. Once I once I leave and I get on the road, um, I get a little short on the phone. You know, if you call <laughs> me up, I'm driving down the road at 80 miles an hour. It's um, anyway. You know, try the, to fill you in. Not hmm. the multitasker that Steve was. Well, well, when I'm driving a van full of rocks, you know, I like to focus. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, I like right to there focus. with you on that. But anyway, thanks everybody for joining us for another edition of Minerals Live. Um, we're going to miss you. It's going to be, like I say, about six, eight weeks before we're on again. But uh, certainly feel free to reach out and give us suggestions and again. We'll so. see you when we get back with all sorts of fun news. Absolutely. Thanks, Christopher. And um, we are on the road again. So anyway, take care, everybody. And uh, we'll catch you on the next edition of Minerals Live.